Hello, everyone. Nice to see you guys. Hey, West Coast people and a couple of you know, people from other time zones. Welcome to AP World Modern. And this is our study session. And we can, we're basically gonna talk about like anything under the sun. But before that, um, we're gonna have a Q&A session along the way. And before that, once again, we have a Instagram account, we have a Twitter account, we have a YouTube account. So if you want some resources, if you want some high quality memes, just, you know, just to chill out, just to relax. We're always available. Um, we always have the memes ready for you. So, you know, for you to like. And we have quality content, I I, I promise you. <laughs> so, by the way, um, I put a poll here. Um, first poll here, it's like, um, I'm asking, what unit are y'all on right now? So, um, I see unit, people, a lot of people are in unit one. There's a couple of people in unit two and one person in unit three. So just, you know, keep that in mind as um, I can gauge how far you guys are on the curriculum. So, all right. All right. Um, so this is what only one of our 50 plus weekly streams. We have a lot of streams, not only in AP world, even in other history subjects. So. Um, but we're going to focus on history. So next time after this, we're going to have a stream on gender in the medieval and early modern world with James uh, tomorrow. We're going to have a, a stream on labor systems with Patrick um, in, the, in the 15. By the way, um, we, have, we have a team of experienced students and teachers. So, you know, we've taken the class. T these teachers have taught the class for years. So. Um, you can always ask questions. You can always let tune in. So, and all of these are based on content. So, we on the 16 we have a religion and early modern empires with Ali. If you're willing to stay up night all night, um, actually no. I mean we're in the West Coast, so it's 9 p.m. Um, PST. So, keep that in mind. Religion, labor, gender. So we're covering we're covering all the themes you need to study in AP World. So we got you covered, and. Yes, Mr. Beckman states that some of the teachers like Patrick have been AP history readers for the exam too. So they know what you need to put in like your short free, free response, you know. Um, basically they're narrowing down what you want to learn instead of just trying to pointlessly memorize all of the details in, you know, 800 years of history, so. And last but not least, we have expanding empires with Donald. So everyone loves empires. So, yep. All right. So back to the study session today. So um, tonight uh, we're going to cover stimulus-based multiple choice questions. Especially you people, if you had unit zero, probably did unit one, two, or three people. Like you probably had a couple of tests. And some of you may know what you're doing, some of you may not, but which we're gonna we're gonna guide you. We're gonna we're gonna just bring in a recap, like to drill it to your head. So you wanna because remember, um memorizing the content is like pretty much useless if you don't know how to apply it. So we're gonna give you we're gonna give you practical applications, we're gonna give you some practice, we're gonna give you some overview and tips that you might you might wanna remember throughout the year. Same goes with short answer questions. You guys probably had some short answer questions before, either um, regardless of maybe being freshman year in, in a different form. So we're gonna have another, we're also gonna have an overview on that. We're gonna have some good practice on that. So once again, we got you covered. And we're gonna have an open-ended Q&A. So it's more like ask, ask me anything. It's not like, um, it's not, I'll, I'll keep asking. I already gave you practice questions by then. So it's your turn to ask me. and. I already saw a question earlier by um, uh, by someone about um, South in Southeast Asia. So if you don't hesitate, like even throughout the stream, if you have a question you don't want to forget it, just ask it there, and we're gonna talk about it first thing first thing in the Q and A sesh section. Like I said, you used to ask a question bar below, so drop drop in the chat or in the ask a question bar. All right, so. Last but not least, we've just started this recently, but um, we're always here to help. Don't forget, we're always here to help. So, um, go to um, if you go to our website, bible.me, and 
there's a little bar um there's a little icon there you some of you are probably familiar with it like so it, there, there's a bot that randomly chatted like oh how's it going do you need help or anything so um once you reply there like we're real human beings we're going to reply to you um so if you want to clarify content learning class, like you're confused and you want your teacher just taught you, you want to know some good resources online, you want some practice multiple choice questions. Once again, we got you covered. Just, you know, chat, like you see in the picture, just chat with us below. And we're real humans, we're not bots. If you want resources and essays, you want to just talk to someone, if you're, you're stressed. Like there's a question there, like I'm stressed because if you just want to talk to someone, you know, high school's tough, but Sometimes you you came at the right place. So, and once again, we are we are previous students and teachers who took or taught the class before. So, don't hesitate to contact us. All right, moving on. So, some of you might be might look at a picture. You can see it's very familiar to you guys. So, um, um. It's just uh, we call it stim we call that stimulus based multiple choice question, which is a fancy term for questions that they have they have, they're like A B C D, but they have a stimulus attached. Uh, a stimulus means a document or a visual or an image, and you want to analyze that. So in the AP exam in May, you're gonna have 55 questions, 55 minutes, so roughly one minute per question. But don't worry, don't let that intimidate you. And I didn't put that there to me. I just I'm just showing like how um like throughout the year um you're gonna your teachers are probably gonna build on like you're gonna increase the questions and now you know why they're doing that because um it, ultimately it's gonna be um 55 questions it's between this unit one two three four and so on and so forth and it's 40 percent of the score so if you're a good test taker you, you like you know you like knowing the facts and you, you're a better test taker than a writer so you want to bank on this. You want you want this to kind of carry you. Like, actually, um, you in the AP test to get a four, like you don't need or a five. You don't need to get a hundred percent in the AP test. You just need, you just need to do like great or adequate in like certain sections. So maybe this will be your carry. And once again, there's always a stimulus. There's an image. There's a written document. So. Um, you, you're, I mean, you probably know this at this point, but I um, just want to keep that in mind. And they come in sets of three to four questions. We all, um, most of us probably know that too, but um, going deeper, um, if you haven't noticed, the first two questions, one or two questions, are usually based on the stimulus. So it's like a reading comprehension. Like if you read a story, they're like, what did the guy do? Something like that. So you have to look closely at the picture. You want to analyze. You want to look closely at the picture. I'm going to talk about tips later, but um, they're usually based directly in the stimulus. You don't need to know any history. You can just like, you can just let the picture tell the story itself. But the next two questions after that, three and four, or they're just three, they're usually based on your actual history knowledge. So you want to make connections. This is where you got to be careful when you study. Should you memorize all the facts or you just need to you need to, do you just need to know the the key concepts the big the big um, picture ideas so um, usually these two questions you want to connect them you want to um, connect them to um, given uh, given stimuli and um, this is number one tip like if you once again if you want to connect that per, first you want to place it properly like if I give you a document about some merchant dude ranting about um, taxes you want to know you want to know you look at a citation you want to know who said it you know you want to know who said it you know you, you want to know what's the time period is he is he ranting during world war one or is he ranting during the mongol invasion of china you know something like that and there's a huge difference as you, as you can tell and you want to want to talk about location because cultures and social and economic policies are different so, so like so a, a merchant ranting in China is different than a merchant ranting in, say, um, North America, you know, like um, culture plays a role in that. So you want to keep that in mind. You want to look at, yeah, before you even read, like even if it's a map, like you want to look at the, the citation. Usually, um, sometimes they don't help, but if they help, they usually give a time period for primary sources, but um, you want to keep that in mind too. And, Okay, so like the next few, um, the next few bullet points are going to be like your tips. So once you look at a citation, you realize it either helped or it did not. Now you want to 
annotate the text. You want to look at the details. You want to um, look at the tone. Like the guy, is he angry? Is he, um, is he, um, you know, um, overjoyed? Like look at the bias. Look at trends. And read the question. When I mean that, I mean duh. You're gonna read the question, but never ever ever rush the question. Like don't skim. Because there is there you might one one you might misread it and give a wrong answer and two, like you skim it too hard like you, you forget there's some some questions have keywords like um, which of the following does um, which of the following does not so you might miss the word not and you might pick the answer that is that is um, that it agrees to the point of the question instead of pointing out the one that's different you know so. You wanna um, you wanna you wanna read it carefully, but um, don't read it word per word. Like, don't take two minutes to read it. Like, what is no? Like, you wanna read it. I mean, once like as you take tests throughout the year, you're gonna realize like how you time yourself. You're gonna practice and how you um, like you're gonna realize how fast or slow you are. So you wanna keep working on that. Throughout. You wanna you wanna calibrate that throughout the year. Like you once again like wording. There's Either all the following are true, except, and you might miss the word except, and you might answer, put the wrong answer. Most describes, you know, stuff like that. And read the choice completely. This is under, this goes along with the first one. Some choices are worded to be partially correct. Like, um, and um, this goes with like skimming. So don't skim the answer. Don't don't just go like the first half and like, the first half is like, oh, um, that sounds right. I'll just pick it. So you want to read all the choices correctly. I mean completely, and you want to read. You, I mean, you you want to read all the choices, and you want to read all of them completely because some of them might be wrong. There might be one word that throws you off that is actually wrong, so you want to keep that in mind too. Trust your first instinct. Like this is true for me, even <laughs> even during the AP test, like or um, even during in class tests, like. I regret it. Like uh, sometimes, like don't change your first answer. Usually, it's right, unless it's really obvious. Like let's say, like you're stuck between two answers. Like if you if you're stuck between two answers, just pick one of them. Like you're good. Or um, I mean, you have a fifty percent chance of getting it right. But like only change if it's really obvious. So like um, if these two are talking about like culture, and and this one's talking about religion, and you pick the one that's religion, and you realize oh, it's about culture. So that's okay, but if it's really like it's hard to distinguish, like um, um, just just stick to your first answer. Like it's usually the the right one, and you <laughs> you don't want to regret like seeing later on that you got it wrong when um you were right the first time. So last, don't spend too much time on one question. Remember, um, you're short in time. You, you only have a, approximately one minute per question. So you, want, you don't want to burn 10 minutes on one question because your mind's like, I knew it was this one. I know it was that one. No, um, just move on. Um, let's see, we have two questions. Okay, um, we'll talk about it later. So thanks for asking. All right, moving on. Last, um, you don't want, if you, uh, this is another good strategy for, um, multiple choice question process of elimination so you want to um like i said if there's uh you want to eliminate the obvious so if there's um in a let's say um it's a it's a document about trade and there's choice about religion so you can just like knock it out like you can cross it out you can put an x on it like look for things that are not supported by the document because even if even if even if we take a while doing that, like I guarantee you, there's always one answer that's all obviously wrong, and it, it'll help you in, if you're like short in time, you want to guess, you know, um, because it's better getting a, getting a it's you have a better chance of getting it right if it's fifty percent than like twenty five percent or zero percent, you know, like you're just purely guessing. Like I said, once you eliminate the obvious, you can at least narrow down to at least two choices. And pick the answer that fits the document more. So you, it sounds really confusing right now, but once we do the practice questions, ooh, yeah, it's practice. Um, once you see, it, you'll see why. Um, you'll see how one one choice fits the other more than the other. So we'll see it later. But if you're stuck with number three, don't once again, you don't want that internal conflict for years. Uh, you don't want to. You want to. You don't want to. You don't want to stay in conflict. Like, um, it, was, it must be A or B or A or B. No, um, once again, you don't have time. So, so yeah, process elimination is a good strategy, especially if you don't know what the topic is.
All right, we're heading. Um, just tell me if I'm going too quick. So, um, in the in the comments um, and chat. Check out the, oh yes, check out the poll once again, what unit are you guys on? But we, we will be using the polls, just a reminder. So um, here we're gonna pick the answer. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you questions and you wanna pick the answer that you think is the best one. All right, um, I'm, I'm sure you guys are ready. I'm gonna show you guys are excited to do this. So let's go. Here we have a picture of the Mayan, oh, hold on. Um, so Mr. Beckman is stating that if you're a teacher and using units, you can use the years. So um, like the time period. So um, in the poll, the first poll, like what unit are you guys on? So um, yeah, just keep in mind. So question number one, we have here a visual. Ooh, ah. So we have the Mayan Dresden Codex, circa 1250 CE. So um, before I proceed, like once again, you want to practice like putting in, placing it in the time period. So you're gonna be like, oh, 1250 CE, that's the first period, it's the unit one. So, you know, trying to like narrow it down because you don't wanna think about World War One <laughs> during um, this, when it's talking about the, the 1250 CE, like 800 years before that. So, while, um, well, um, so the question is, the image most clearly re reflects which part of Mayan civilization, is it A, the system hieroglyphics, B, the belief in the creator god, Itzamna, C, the mind rulers, declarations, divine authority, or D, the solar calendar. So we have a poll here. It's um, similar space, um, SBMC practice question one, put your answers, A, B, C, D. I see two people saying A, one, people's, one person saying C. Don't worry, uh, we're not here to judge you uh, whether you're right or wrong. Remember, this is practice. So you wanna see what do you wanna work on? So I'm I'm gonna help you narrow it down. So, all right. I'll wait for, I'll count like 20 seconds. So it's in the polls, practice question number one. All right, last call, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, before I reveal the answer, so this is um, this is an example of the, the when, I, when I went over it earlier, this is an example of the first two question type. Like um, um, you wanna look directly at the document, just, just focus at the document, look at all like the entirety of it. So you wanna narrow it down like, um, yeah, so, um, also, um, what do you call this? I was going to say something, but I'll, I'll talk about it later. So, all right, the answer is A. So um, I'm going to go over the reasoning. So good job, guys. If you put A, if you didn't, don't worry. We got this. So um, my mindset is like I'm doing. I'm doing the process of an Asian strategy. If you if you're not, that's okay. So yeah, Anthony, he's like, let's go, knights. <laughs> so so I was like. Um, Look at the picture. Like, what is it? What does it symbolize? So I said, um, so the system of hieroglyphics, A is a maybe. I mean, there are symbols across the codex, so that makes sense. But I don't want to pick it yet because there'll be other answers that are, you know, better than that one. So looking looking down. So B, I, I, the belief in the creator god Itzamna, and we'll, and then so you see you see the word God and some dude right. In the picture, so um, looking at looking back at the codex, is there a is there a god or a is there a god or a large a, a larger being there? Um, you know, to, are, there, are there followers like bowing down to the guy? No, I just see symbols, so it's not B. So it's not like something you would see in a religious document. You only see symbols, literally. So, so it's not B. Cross out B. C. The mind rule is the declaration of divine authority. This is the same as religion. Do you see some guy, like do you see a king or a or a chief, like a a, um, a major, like uh, a major leader standing in top of something, or and do you, do you see like followers like um like bowing down to him? Like it's pretty much the same mindset as B. So I don't see a ruler or a god. So once again, you want to think critically when you look at images, like just literally don't, don't overthink it. Like take it at face value, like what they're showing you. So it's not C cross out C. Next D, the solar calendar. Now that's tricky. I, you, you, 
you see how I didn't cross it out? That's tricky because um, I, I, I was an overthinker before. I was like, hmm, what if that actually, these symbols were actually months and, you know, days. Um, and it is true that the Mayan civilization had a solar calendar, but like, um, um, which describes it better? This goes back to the see the better fit. Like, I, you see symbols and like, which choice talked about having like symbols and writing systems. If you um, if you know um, what hieroglyphics are, like you just probably think Egypt, like all oh, those symbols in the cave. Yes, they are right. That's um, so um, it's a form of writing. So this is a writing system. So um, A fits it better. So it's not a solar kind. Of, some of you may probably think like, oh, um, I mean it's kind of obvious, but some may some may not. So um, once again, narrowing it down. It um see the better fit. So good job, guys. Thanks for <laughs> the Chelsea got him. And Winston's like, yeah. Okay, moving on. Practice question number two. So we have a good old image here of people in a field and some water in a lake. And it's it's made by Jose Muro Pico, the construction of the Chinampas, circa 1500s. So um, the question is the building of Chinampas, which is once again, the Chinampas is, are these like square plots of land, is best described as A, method of intensive agriculture, B, centralized political authority, authority C, water management, or D, a form of <clears throat> pollution. Once again, use the poll, guys. I'll give you a minute. Actually, 30 seconds sounds enough. All right, seven people said A, eight people said A. So you can tell, like, um, I'm not saying if you people are right yet, but like, you can tell that even if you don't know the history behind like what the Chinampa is, but it, you can see how um, you can just make connections just by looking at the stimulus. So that's what we want to build on throughout the year. So, all right, three, two, one. All right, 11 people said A, and guess what? You're right. So, um, so um, you can just jump in on like, um, you can just, um, you can just, if you, um, you can just jump in there and yeah, like work boys. So you can just jump in there and say like, oh, that's kind of obvious. I mean, there's people farming, there's people, you know, planting. So it's agriculture, like no brainer. Or some of you may go process elimination. Like B, it's not B because there's no, once again, it's no leader. There's no, it's not like they're talking, they're like showing like warriors, like um, they're, they're just bureaucrats collecting taxes. So it's not that. And you can cross up pollution because Mm, I don't think it's really polluted. So um, you can, um, some of you may uh, may get thrown out by water management, but um, you can see agriculture fits it better because water is just purely about like irrigation, you know, um, like, um, like, you know, like sanitary concerns, like in, in like early cities or civilizations. So good job, guys. Moving on. Ooh, by, say bye-bye to pictures. Now we're going to have, have some documents here. So... Does the barbarian, I'm gonna read it. Does the barbarians from beyond the seas through their countries are truly distant have come to audience bearing objects and presents? The emperor approving of their loyalty and sincerity has ordered us, Shanghai, and the others at the head of several tens of thousands of officers and flag troops to ascend or use more than 100 large ships to go and confer presents on them in order to make manifest the transforming power of the imperial virtue and to treat distant people with kindness. So which of the following explains why the Ming Dynasty halted the voyages of Zheng He? Is it A, Chinese had a difficult time competing with European technology? B, the Chinese had an unfavorable balance of trade? C, the voyages were expensive and the world beyond China was deemed of little value? D, many of Zheng He's ships have been greatly damaged during his early expeditions. Put your answers in the polls. And you might notice, this is one of these questions like the third or fourth one, like it requires quite a bit of historical knowledge. So if you don't know who Zheng He is or the Ming Dynasty, just um just give it a shot. You know, it's better than not guessing at all. So all right, I'll check the polls. Three, two, one. 
Let's practice question number three, guys. Okay, three C's. Anyone else? Boop, boop. By the way, I said, dude, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying everyone's like, um, but, but when I was a student, like, don't don't be that bandwagon who just like, when, when they're this like orally in class, like, don't be that bandwagon who just follows the answer for no reason. Like, follow your heart. So, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Some if I'm going too fast. So, all right, five people said C. Let's see, 15 more seconds. All right, three, two, one. Okay, nine people said C. <laughs> like, you, you guys are anonymous, like, I, I, I like unanimous. Like, you guys know your content, huh? Okay, so once again, this one usually requires historical knowledge and you're right, once again, good job. Give yourself a pat on the back. It's C. So, um, I use process, you can use process elimination because um, like one, the document is kind of wordy and it, you might take two, you might take like you to read it twice for you to figure it out, or you can just head straight to process elimination. So, um, so like, just a disclaimer, this is like of historical knowledge. So if you don't know any of this, like I recommend that you read it, like you watch Crash Course or any good resource out there, you can ask us after the stream. So, all right. So A is the Chinese had a difficult time competing with European technology. So um, it's not A because one, they're, if you think about it, like they weren't directly competing with Rome, like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna beat you in your, in your trade. No, they weren't, uh, like, I'm gonna beat you with my inventions, I'll beat you with my ship, like, I have a better ship. No, they weren't like that, necessarily. They weren't head-to-head -head rivals back then. And two, um, they were pretty much advanced in their own merits, because you see, this guy, Zhang He, even if you don't know him, if this guy can explore across, beyond China, beyond, like, you know, the Indian Ocean Trade Network, he, they're pretty advanced. Like they know their their monsoon technology. They know their sails. They have their compasses. So they were really competing. So B, the Chinese had a favorable balance of trade. Like if you don't notice, you might you might pick this because um makes sense. Unfavorable balance of trade. Basically, they're kind of bankrupt. They're kind of broke. Like they don't have money or like they're losing in like the trade game. So it's like monopoly. <laughs> You're getting bankrupt. So um they weren't really um. If you know history, they were really like on that verge of collapse yet, like every other empire that collapsed, you know. Um, it is possible, but um, Voyages didn't, like if you recall in history, Voyages didn't stop because they went bankrupt and we were losing profit once again. So so uh, when you look here, C is a maybe. The Voyages were expensive and the world beyond China were deemed of little value. So he's right. I mean, the Voyages were expensive. Like they didn't cost like five bucks to like, hey, um, Want to go to Europe, buddy? No. Um, each like travel back that wasn't as convenient as how we know it today. So it wasn't that easy. So it cost a lot of um, funds in the government. So D is many of Zhang Ha's ships have been gravely damaged through his early expeditions. It's kind of true too, because I mean you're all gonna encounter people throughout the trade seasons. They'll try to like you know ambush you. They'll try to steal your stuff. You don't have insurance back then, so. I mean, this is where it boils down. Is it the right? Which is better? Like, what makes more sense? Like, what is more logical? If you're the government leader, like, are you gonna, um, are you gonna like give up after like two ships are being like, you know, attacked, or are you gonna give up because like you don't, you don't, are you gonna give up traveling because you don't want to travel and like, yeah, yeah, I, no, I won't give up exactly. Oh, oh, that's a spirit, Anthony. We stand, we like that. So. Um, you want to keep that in mind. So th in this case, like C is like more logical, like it's more expensive, like either way. And like, if you think about it, Chinese were more centralized. Like their mindset is more like, we need to build this society. We need to make the perfect society. It's not like we need to help everyone. It's not like we need to, we need to interact with everyone. So um, it was more of, um, it's more of a conservative mindset. They want to just, they're, they're isolated. Let's see, someone asked a question. 
So for Verone, you said for the questions you didn't cross out, like the choices, will there be points for them or not? So um, in multiple choice questions, either you get credit or you don't get credit. So um, that's why I'm, I'm teaching you like a process elimination method because you want to get the right answer. You know, you're not really going to get doc points for getting it wrong, but you're not just not going to get the maximum points possible. So um, that sounds technical, but basically either you get it right or you get it wrong. So um, you can all, you can you can follow it up if I didn't really answer your question. So yes. All right, back to here. Good job, guys. Most of you said C. Woohoo. All right. This is probably our, I think our last one. So we're back to images because honestly, like documents, once you get used to them, they're easy, but sometimes images are hard to figure out. I mean, the ones I have probably are not, maybe, maybe not, but um, they're more like you have to look closely at the very minute details in the picture so you can figure it out. So here, um, image one is Hans Weigel, Weigel, a wood kind of Ottoman Janissary for the 1577. So unit two, unit three people, you got this probably. And we have Japanese Japanese arcade busiers, which are basically like people with like guns, I guess. So um, oops. And the question is, which of the following broad trends is alluded to in these images? So it's A, religious warfare, B, mistreatment of ethnic minorities, C, technology transfer, D growing prevalence of Corey's labor. So once again, it's one of those stimulus questions. Um, you don't need to know who the Ottomans are to figure this out. And also as a bonus, this is one of those AP, um, this is one of those like big picture questions. So like they're talking, they want to know about like your knowledge of like the spice tea or the inspect deeds, like um, social, political interactions with the environment, cultural, economic, and technology they want you they want to they're, they're asking you if you know if you know like your your stuff if you know your themes you're not just memorizing every small detail like oh um let's see i don't want to go controversial let's say um barack obama was elected 2012 something like that you know like you don't need you don't need every detail so let's see Ooh, people are split up here so we have ooh a b c d people so two for a one for b four for c one for d all right, I'll give you 30 more seconds. <laughs> Donald Trump, Barack Obama's role. Ooh, okay, spicy. Okay, <laughs> 30 more seconds. Ooh, they changed your answers. Okay, it's either A or C. It's kind of equal. So 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I see some people change their answers like, ooh, okay, I like that. But I like how you guys are thinking. So good job. So the answer is C. So good job, guys. Like, um, good job. And if you didn't get it, don't worry. I, need, I didn't know you could change your answer. Oh, no. Okay, so if you like, um, I mean, it's the last poll, but like if you click like, um, let's see, I don't see it, but um, oh, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, you can change your answer. Like next time you, we have another one of these. Um, let's see. Ooh, lag. Okay, so it's C. Um, here, um, it's kind of, um, if you don't know who the Ottomans are, just think of the broad trends. You want to do the process elimination thing I'm talking about again. So um, um, if you look at A, religious warfare, like, it makes sense. You know why? Because warfare involves weapons, like Captain Obvious, come on. But it does suggest warfare. It's one of those answers that are partially correct, but they're not entirely correct. There's not, I think I said it earlier, but there's not enough evidence. So if you look here, we have a guy with a musket. If you look at the, if you look at the right, um, these people are have guns. So it makes sense that it was warfare, but the real question is, is it religious? Do you see like people like, do you see like, let's say here, there's like in, in like the right picture, like do you see like people in like, um you know like people and like two groups of people in different attires like do everyone have turbans or do they have like those feds hats or like whatever that made you distinguish like they're different religion people no that's that's the problem so it, there's not enough evidence once again you want to take multiple choice questions face value like just show this don't don't like add like um don't don't imagine some other guy, like in, in in the side, like oh he's a he's a Muslim. This guy's a Christian. Like oh they're fighting. No, just take this. Like there's not no evidence basically. 
That's all. That's all what it boils down to. B mistreatment of ethnic minorities. Hmm. You can tell if it's mistreatment probably because they're kind. They kind of pointing their guns at them. They're kind of like threatening them, but. It's the same thing. Do you see other people in different like? Is there other ethnic groups present in the video? In the video, but the visual, no. There's not enough evidence, so cross it out. Or cross it out. So C, technology transfer. It doesn't make sense because like, at first, but like it's a maybe. Like, guns technically count as technology. Um, like weapons. Like you know, we used to have spears and axes but now we have guns we have um we have we have more advanced weapons so you can you can say it's a maybe but you want to look down d growing prevalence of coerced labor so coerced labor you usually think about slavery you think about slavery like is there evidence of slavery in the picture it's like it's like religious warfare is there um mm, yeah no please don't spam the chat so um is there evidence of slavery in the picture? No, I only see a guy, guys holding guns. So no. Going back to C, since you crossed out all answers but hypothetically, um, you should be left with C. Like it, it, it makes more sense actually. Technology to transfer. If you know this goes back, it's better if you know your history. If you know your history, an Ottoman janissary, you would see them in the Middle East. So it's in the middle of like the world. It's like um, it's like it's like the Middle Eastern region. So. That was during 1577. But Japanese archivists, where are they? They're in Japan. So you, there's a distance between between Middle East and Japan, but how how did that happen? How did how did they have the same kind of weapons? It was because they both groups, oh, good question. They both groups have guns around the same time period. Um um not yet. Um not I mean if you look at if you, the broad time period like 1450 to 1750 yes but not during the exact same year or decade. So it takes a while. So um like a little history lesson here like um gunpowder was more um I think correct me I'm wrong it's um it was during the in the central age not central asia but like uh it was developed further during the 1500s 1450s in like the middle east region and it just spread like everywhere japan back then was feudal if you remember they were just they just had like those katanas like all you see in those like stereotypical japanese movies like that was katanas they had those um they didn't only they don't they had like um Mm, but yeah, yeah. Basically, they were like not advanced, and they were isolated back then. So um, they didn't instantaneously weren't had the same weapons. So there has to be a transfer. That's why it's letter C. There has to be a transfer between the Middle East or China. Yeah, China had gunpowder, but the Middle East had the weapons. So there, there had to be a transfer. So um, yeah. So um, I like how you guys are thinking. Good job. Give yourself a pat in the back. Boop boop. All right. So now we're done with stimulus-based multiple questions. So now we're now um, we're moving on to SAQs. So what are SAQs? Some of you familiar with it. So there's 13 minutes for each question. It's it's three question three questions, um, three parts. So 20% of score your score in AP World. So if you're a writer, you can use this as a carry with the S base. So four questions, three parts each. So there's four questions. Like the first two are required. But the rest of them, like um, the rest of them, um, there's there, the last part, like there's two of them. You can pick one of the two. So um, that gives you quite a bit of edge because one, they have like different time periods. One of them is the early uh, modern history. The other is the late modern history, like World War One, World War Two. Early is like today, like what we're learning now. So yeah, they're both required. And also, usually first question is like secondary sources. So what means, so like, it's like a historian it's like um it's like a historian um discussing like let's say Roman Empire back then there's this guy um these like today's historian like 2019 or like 1970 something historians it's not the exact date like when you look at the date it's not like they were alive back then but they were like discussing it so that's the secondary source question two is the primary source primary source is what it's directly in the event so if there's a war let's say I mean I like using World War one example so like it's about some guy and during the war it's like his personal diary unlike a secondary story which is like some political analyst talking about world war one you know you, you see the difference and question three and four are required i mean not required but optional pick one of the two 
and there's no evidence, there's no stimulus. So either you know it or you don't. So um, that's why you want, once again, you want to narrow down what you want to study. So um, you know what to say in the exam. Like, doesn't matter what, what question they bring you, you got, you got bread. So, and there are three key words in the prompts. There's three words that um, they give you, like the, the verb words, like the, the ones they want you to do. Either they want you to identify, like, identify the changes in the period 14, 1250 to 1450. What are topics usually used for question three? So, um, oh yeah, we're well, going back. So question three is I think um, 1200, like it's not a topic, it's more of the time period. So, the, so they still get, it's so broad, but they ask you about, um, they ask you during the time period like 1200 to, um, I think 1750, so like 500 years, I think. I mean, like, because I'm, I mean, a lot happened back then. So um, it's more of the time frame. And then question four, if you pick question four over question three, it's about like, I think 1750 to 2001, like the present. So if you're, if you're more of an old style person, like um, you like, you like, like the earlier, like empires back then, like the Mongols, you know, um, pick question three. If you like more of the world wars, like communism or um, the colon decolonization of Africa, you know, like we, we learn it over the year, um, pick question four. So you don't have to do both. That's a good, that's a good part. So I hope it answered your question. Going back, there's three keywords you want to identify. If they tell identify, just give an answer, you're done. Like um, if they ask you, like identify a change in technology during the period 1250s, like to 1450 in Central Asia. So you can say um, nomadic groups change from, um, let's say, I mean, I'm, I'm just making an, make up an answer. So don't take my words exactly. So like you change from like um, spears and like um, dull axes to horseback riding and bow and arrows. So you're done, that's your answer. Describe is you give your answer, but you need an example with it. So um, let's say same question, like a, a technology, like they shifted from uh, the um, nomadic tribes shifted from dial weapons to more um, durable ones, like the bow and arrow and horseback riding along the way. It like for example, um, like you can give a specific you want a specific example. So like let's say the Mongols use this and that. So Basically, you want a specific example that comes along with that. So let's describe. Explain is answer. You give an answer, you give an example, and you have to explain how it connects to the answer. So it goes like, um, so yeah, yeah, you basically need to explain why the Mongol tribes like help, like, support like your argument that, um, um, what do you call this? That the nomadic tribes change um, like the type of weapons from more dull ones to more durable ones and more um, e efficient ones. So those are three key words. And don't, once again, don't go beyond what is asked. So if they just tell you to identify, don't, don't be extra and go explain. If they're asking you to explain, don't be an, don't be like a minimalist and just go identify. Like you don't get extra credit, you don't go, you don't get partial credit. Either you get it or you don't. So we have a good old card here. So when writing SAQs, think A's. So like this goes with identify. So answer the question. That's the that's the answer for the identify. Cite evidence or example. That's the describe part. Like you want to describe. You, if you, I mean, if you're describing like what you did over the weekend, you're gonna you're gonna tell a story. Like you're gonna give examples. Like I went to the movies. I went to watch. I went to watch a joke or something like that. You give specific details, right? So yeah, students can comment on question and ask a question of those you want to know too. So going back, so yeah, you're giving it, you're describing it. And when you're explaining it, let's say I watched a movie, why did you watch the movie? Because I liked the movie or like, because I'm interested in it. So you're explaining something, you're explaining how, why you did it. So you're explaining why your answer, why you're giving the answer in the first place. Like, um, why is it important? So. We call it the ace, like it's usually, usually one sentence long each. So yeah, um, there goes the ace method. And bonus, I didn't say it earlier, but we have an SAQ practice stream by Caroline Castellano, Castellano soon. It's on the four days from now, um, 5 p.m. PST, Pacific time. So um, 
if you want more practice on this, I, I have like a couple questions here, but if you want more practice, you're not confident with this out of the stream, just go for it. All right, so we have short answer question. We have a practice question here. So, um, okay, I'll read it. Inner and Central Asia have long been seen as a zone of contact and transmission, a lengthy conveyor belt on which commercial and cultural wares travel between the major civilizations of Eurasia. The nom nomads had an essential but largely unacknowledged role in this cultural traffic. While nomadic tribes had as their primary objective the control and exploitation of sedentary subjects, the secondary effect was the creation of numerous opportunities for cross-cultural contact, comparison, and exchange. So you see, they're talking about nomads and um, empires here. Indeed, although nomads are normally included in the analysis of the political context of trans-Eurasian exchange, very technical, they're typically left out of the cultural equation. Here, the great sedentary civilizations are placed at center stage, particularly when scientific and cultural transfers are under consideration. But as we have seen, pastoral nomads were the chief initiators, promoters, and agents of exchange between East and West. So this is a secondary source. So Basically, he's analyzing how the impact of nomadic tribes in Central Asia, like did they change the world that much or just quite a little? So I have my questions below. So identify one specific historical example of a cultural exchange between nomads and non-nomads that occurred in the period between 1450. So if you have examples, just drop in the comments below. I'll give you um, 30 seconds. So like think on what you've learned, like, any uh, interactions between nomads and non-nomads. Nomads are the ones that followed the food, they moved around. And non-nomads are the ones that settled. They're usually the empires, they're usually the civilizations. So like, think of an example of that real quick for me, before 1450. All right, sounds good. Okay, so I'll go, let's go straight so we can, um, Get to the like, the good parts. So, um, so you can say that like um, if you haven't gone over it, um, at unit one, um, you can go over. Um, you can talk about the the white hunts in China, or um, like there were they're like you know how there was a Great Wall of China. So like out beyond that border in China, there were there were nomadic tribes within them. Like the Chinese were trying to like make a like build a wall, like um to like stop them from invading. You can talk about like those um, white hunts. You can talk about the Visigoths in Europe, like these, like the one that like led to the fall of Rome, like those nomads. You can talk about the Mongols, they were nomadic. If you haven't, you'll learn about them later, so. Okay, explain one cultural, cross-cultural exchange. So that means like basically like between two regions, so like Asia and Africa, or like Europe and Asia. That would challenge the assertion in the last sentence of the passage concerning the nomads' role in cross-regional exchanges. So, so it's the last sentence, like I highlighted in blue. So they were arguing that the nomads were the, basically the, the reason. Okay, um, um, I'll go over that. So um, as you read, like they're arguing, basically arguing that the nomads were the reason why they were the main main proponents. They were the main cause of cross-cultural exchange between East and West in the 13th, 14th century. So um, basically, what you want to counter argument on that. So um, I would say, um, I can argue, you could argue um, Christianity, like, okay, like for, um, you can argue that Christianity, like, re or religion spread, were spread mostly by merchants and missionaries from like different regions, from non-nomadic empires, from Europe to Africa to Asia. So basically, like it wasn't the nomads who spread the religion. It wasn't that there weren't the people who did the cross-cultural exchange. Um, there, it's uh, there, the, uh, the missionaries. You can tell that missionaries or merchants were responsible for that exchange, or you can argue that the spread of technology, like paper making, guns. Um, were spread by through merchants through like these um, travelers. So it wasn't once again. It's not the nomads. It's the merchants. So um, compass or paper making. So um, you can argue that. So when I saw uh, Sabrina was asking, when I saw identified, does the answer need to be like one specific? Um, yeah. So um, Mr. Beckman just said um, use use the use the words from the prompt. So if it's asking like. Yes, you're right. So, like, you can say one specific historical example of an cross. Yeah, yeah. Basically, use the STEM words because not only does it help you, and not only does it like show like the graders that you're on the right track, 
But um, yeah, rest yes, restate the question. Um, it's not being redundant. It's like your mind is like hardwired. Like I should answer it. Like you're like you. It's like you're starting it by by with the help of the question. Like one historical example. So like you're not straying away because you don't want to not answer their problem instead of saying like. Oh, back there, back in the day, nomads um, traveled. No, we're asking a cultural exchange here. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. So um, we can um, go. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go over this later um, because um, we all, I think we all have ten minutes. But I can I can extend. But um, I want to address the questions for um, for the, for the four questions like here. So we'll go over that later. So Q and A. Don't worry if you have questions. If you have questions, just go on. Um, I'll go over the questions. So, if you, Anthony is, is Anthony still here? Yes. Good job. Nice. Thanks for him. Okay. So Anthony's here. Develop. He wants to know about development in South Southeast Asia between 1200 to 1450. So Unit One. So um, I gotta admit, like South and Southeast Asia during this time, especially Southeast Asia, it's like underrated. It's like it was barely covered. We always talk about Central Asia. We always talk about China. We always talk about Africa to some degree, but there's no mention about Southeast Asia. So I'm not surprised. So um, um, what you need to know is that like, you wanna look big picture. So um, India during this time, India and Southeast Asia, if you look at the map, um, they were along the coast, they're along, not the coast, they're along the ocean. So they were major participants in the Indian Ocean Trade Network. So basically they were they were like, they traded like their goods, they traded their um, products with like other uh, regions. So like with um, Muslim merchants in the Middle East, with Chinese merchants. So basically they were like the center of like Indian Ocean Trade, like that region, because it makes sense, they're in the middle area. So. That is one, and if you want some um, political examples, like in in the Khmer Kingdom, in in Cambodia, in like the Sri Vijaya Kingdom, like leaders, it's like every other empire. They they used um, they used buildings, they used like these huge monuments to them to flex their power, <laughs> in modern terms. So like if you if you, you might you might hear the Angkor Wat in Cambodia, it's like a religious place. Like you can see how one powerful the leaders of the Khmer Kingdom are and to how devoted they are to their religion. And also religions diffuse, the, the religion spread throughout the, uh, once again, it's the Indian Ocean Trade Network. So religion spread. So, um, so like, um, you know how um, Buddhism started in India and went down to Southeast Asia, um, you know, um, and then back to China. Um, Hinduism spread to like even the major religions. So like from even from Europe or um, or the Middle East, Islam or the, the four major religions you need to know: Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, and Christianity. It's like all these major religions always spread. At any any like since it since it started, it always spread. And some Buddhist details, they had this um, rice agriculture in Southeast Asia. India back then was divided. So the northern half, it's not the India we know today. India, the northern half of India is Islam. It's under the what we call the Delhi Sultanate. And guess what? A sultanate, like it's led by a sultan, which we know as like an Indian, um, as an Islamic Muslim leader. So that northern half, like they tried to consolidate their, they tried to invade the south. But they were um, they kind of failed, so it's still it's still like natively Hindu, like a Hinduism, so like um, which originated in India. So hope it um, answers your question. If you have more questions, just ask me um, or everyone else in like the Fiveable website. So number two, how did Islam expand the empire? Good questions, Anthony. By the way, so Islam expanded even every other religions expanded three ways, th three or two. One is via conquest. So if you conquer, let's say I'm I'm a um let's say I'm from let's say you're in America, you conquer you conquer Africa, um you conquer um I don't know India. So um there's a chance that like if um if you're a Christian, you want to impose Christianity um throughout the empire because like honestly it makes more sense, it makes organization better because you know that how religions have different beliefs and you want everyone, you don't want unity, you don't want your empire to crumble like three, two, one, oops, gone. Like it's like a, it's like a Jenga, Jenga, Jenga board. Like it's it gone. You don't want that. So you want everyone to follow 
the same religion as yours. So initially, um, it's forced adoption. If either you had a choice or you're not, then you're dead. So people didn't have a choice. So, oh, oh um, yeah, yeah, Islam expanded empire. Sorry, I thought I misread the question. So, Islam expanded empire by um conquest, um trade. So, um, you're talking about religion, right? So trade, um. So as these merchants interacted, like these different merchants interacted, like some some were like interested in reported back to like you know their the higher ups and they're like oh, it's an interesting um religion, um that's one part and like some leaders of like these like other tri other empires were like hmm, if you want to win over these potential trade trade partners we want we want to change our religion so we can have like a spiritual connection so some some leaders did that and so that's how they expanded too. So um, that's one. And then um, some leaders adopted the like, religion like voluntarily. So um, just out of interest. And when you adopt, when, when a leader adopts, like especially a well-adored leader, when, it, when he adopts a, um, a religion, like it, there's a tendency that the people under his empire will also adopt it. So um, you're good. Um, so that's another way. But if you're talking, but primarily it's not, it's not like, people back there were buddy buddy. Like it, it's mostly conquest realistically. So it's more like even the more that it's a game of drones, you know, so hope it helped. Okay, next we have um, Veronia, are you still here? Yes, nice. So can you go over Hippo? Can you please go over Hippo? Actually interesting, Um, we, I went over this before in like the study session before, but don't worry, I got you. So Hippo. Um, this is um this is a strategy if, uh, for everyone else it's a strategy used for um and analyzing documents especially for a dbq so it's it's basically an acronym so h stands for so basically once again you want to analyze your document using the hippo strategy it's a strategy so h yeah yeah okay h stands for historical context so what's going on look at the document look at the caption what's going on um actually let me go back um like a couple of slides. Oop, oop, oop. Let's see. Yeah, some um some people some people use happy to. Anyways, I'm not I'm not gonna go over that. Um, I mean not, not that I'm not going over that, but let's see. No, not this one. Okay, let, like here here. So like H is historical context. Um, you wanna like you wanna place a time period where it is. So here, like it's constructed the Chinampas, it's the 1500s. So this is where you place what's going on. It, it was during the the I don't know post classical era or the early modern era. So um, you know you, you want to know who the author is. You want to know who these people are in the picture. Are these Aztecs? Are these Mayans? Are these Europeans? You know you want to know um, what's going on literally. So these people are planting there these are doing agriculture so that's h i'm oh, sorry i is intended audience usually it's in the annotations or the the caption so you want to know who whoever jose muro pico is who to who why is he who is he like reaching out to who is his audience who is he showing this picture of like these people to are he showing these to, to like are is he showing these to like people who are like you know in an art exhibit or is he reaching out to modern day people or he's reaching out to the people that during the time period, you know? So you wanna, oops. Okay, you wanna keep that in mind. So that's I, tell the audience. P is, P number one is purpose. Why is he doing this? Um, I can't come, I can't, um, so it's usually too blank. So what, what, why is he doing this? What's the reason behind it? So you can say to, to depict the life uh, in the, in the Aztec civilization during 1500, that's like a possible answer. It could be like just to be spiteful and petty. You know, it, it, it's it's a huge um, it's um, opinionated. So basically, it's how you interpret it. It's no right or wrong answer. So that's the per first P. Second P, POV, point of view. Like, what is he representing here? Is he with the natives or is he against the natives who are doing this? Um, these Aztecs, um, you know, like basically historical bias. So is he being like, is he being like spiteful towards them? He's like showing them like literally being like ragged people or is he being like, he's being like 
respectful is he showing like the 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 original beauty of like this these people like doing this they're just chilling out in the fields you know that's p perspective usually we stop there but i know you're talking about o or y um o is usually i think um some teachers do it like how um, our, my teacher did that o is basically how you organize how you group all of these documents so in a dbq there are seven documents i recommend you 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 analyze all of them so how you group them so like let's say you have like seven documents about these aztec natives so you can group them like one group is like what um they're like being glorifying these natives and if this other group is like against the natives like the europeans who can eventually conquer them you know so you want to group them that's the, oh that's organization okay so hope it um hope it um it's, it's kind of a really rough overview, but hope um, it helped you. Um, uh, we call this hope it helped you. So, going back, um, I think there's another question. Please go over hippos. Okay, um, what is the significance of women in East Asia? So, um, if you remember, um, East Asia. So you're you um, once again think of the context. Where is East Asia? East is here. And what's in um, East Asia? So there's China, there's Japan. So um, during this time period, um, women were still like, they were not still not equals. Um, they were still expected to like defer to men and all stuff like that. But you see Hitler, yeah, yes. Actually, um, oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Veronia. I mean, actually that's just kind of my teacher thing, but like P-O, hippo, like I think the po, the po like it's P-O, not just like P and O, but I mean, to each their own. So, <laughs> hope I didn't confuse you. So, uh, going back to women in East Asia. So, women back then were, were they're still kind of inferior. But, um, like, let's say China. Like, can, you know, Confucianism, right? Like, um, they're building a perfect society. They're building a like, it's about merit. So, like, five of um, part of the um, yes, uh, Mr. Beckman, you don't need to do one of them with the document that you're writing about, not all of them. So, going back to women. Um, like the confusion like there's like the filial piety like the relationships between the master and the disciple like um the son to the father so like women were expected to like um defer to basically um defer to the the husbands like basically they're still kind of inferior but um yeah um yeah i mean they're still kind of inferior and well there was kind of um it, it'll it'll change it'll continue and it'll quite a bit of changes throughout um throughout the history but um back then um they're still kind of inferior didn't have like yes um social expectation yes yes good job expectation chinese women should be dependent on their male, male relatives so like they didn't have a say in like issues like they didn't get to both was filial piety neo confucianism um mm, filial piety um continued to like like a, a modified version of it or like from original like continue to neo confucianism but like it, it it started with the original the og confucianism so um it, it's not it's not like mutually exclusive to like one of the two it's like it's i mean neo confucianism emerged from confucianism so um no worry you're on the right track though so good job all right um who is joe abbasid calvin <laughs> Uh, I talk about the Joe Mama joke and yeah, nice. Okay, um, do you want to talk about do you want to talk about the Abbasid Caliphate or? Okay, I'll, I'll just talk about it. So the Abbasid Caliphate is basically one of the two Islamic empires. Some um, Anthony kind of mentioned it, but um, it was during the post-classical era, like 600 CE. So if you took unit zero to 4050, so like this is during like after you know how Muhammad um establishes islam in like the middle east and he dies and then these people like are trying to succeed him um these people like succeed him the, um we call it caliphates so caliphates are basically like you know em they're, they're basically like their own cool term of like empire so in um islam so that's um abbasid caliphates one of the two caliphates major caliphates but they expanded if i remember correctly westward so they went from middle east to northern africa to um europe as far as spain so um um they did um they they stimulated what you need to know is they kind of stimulated the golden age of islam where 
all these scholars from around the world went to this um like the major this major like region because like the math you know the math like um scholarly works like uh, about architecture it's like the renaissance actually i mean i shouldn't bring up terms but um it's pretty much like the the um like a, a wave of you know knowledge and scholar um scholarship and academics you know that emerged so um hope that answers your question so any other questions guys Ooh, wait wait, wait i think it's a question Joe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Creeper. Amen. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Um, I'll go over this real quick. Um, I'll go over this real quick. Uh, nice try. Um, so this is an image of the cat. This is from the calendar. So you, you can see how documents have questions. So you want to do the hippo if you want to practice in that. So this is the Catalan Atlas with description by Abraham Kresks. So it's like a it's like a map drawn drawn by a guy named Abraham Kraskis. He hasn't visited West Africa, but he relied on the accounts of travelers to make this map. And it says here in the inscription that the Black Lord is this Black Lord is called Musa Mali. You're gonna learn you're gonna learn about him. He's the richest dude ever. Um, if you haven't learned the Black people of Mali, so abundant is the gold which is found in his country that he's the richest and most noble king in all the land. Yes, Anthony, this is an Islam. This is the, but this is not the Islamic empire talking about. This is the Islamic, like, actually, no, 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 this is just like independent. Like eventually he becomes an, he becomes Islam, he becomes a Muslim, but this is like before that. So then once like the Middle Easterns interact with, with um, Africans. So let's just kind of later, not really later on, but not immediately after the Abbasid Caliphate or the Islamic empires expanded. It eventually expanded though to Africa. So I like your brain of thought, thought. So going back, it says here, Masa Musa is seated on a gold throne, wearing a gold crown, holding a gold scepter and a huge gold coin. So you can tell he's flexing all his gold. Everything's gold. And the, the lines are trade routes converging in Mali. So Mali, so this is a, this is a city or a town in Africa. This is a trade, Gotcha, Kuchiko. This is this is the central uh, location. This is where all the trade happens. It's one of those trade centers. Let's go to the questions. Identify one aspect of the sourcing of this document and explain how it influences the document. So this is really technical. You can see like what's the sourcing of the document. So um, I'll give you a hint. It's another word for P O V. Once again, doing the hippo thing, like the point of view of whoever wrote this, whoever drew this. So if you remember what I was talking about earlier, this was the atlas by this some dude in Spain who drew a map based on like travelers. So you can say that it's from a European guy, um, first and foremost, and medieval Spanish dude to be more map maker to be specific. Don't use casual words like I'm saying, dude, no, 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 don't be like me. And um, you can also um, you can exp um, you can say how um, there's a, quite a dash of racism there. Like he's outright saying black. He's not saying African. He's saying black. So you can say that because point of view matters. Everything matters. Like gender, race, ethnicity, social class. So you wanna you wanna focus on all that. You wanna nail down as many things as possible. But there's also admiration. You can look at the tone that he's saying. He is the most rich, you know, he is the richest. He is the most noble. If you're if you're mad at your mom or dad, I mean, are you gonna like, are you gonna like praise them? No, <laughs> no, you're not. So um, you can talk about the tone and like um, how um, he's a European and there's a, quite a bit of racism. So got this. B, identify and explain one similarity also. Some SEQs also focus on the key AP skills, comparison, like you wanna, like what's the same, what's the difference, continuity and change, what changed over time, what continued over time, like slavery continued for a long while, while um, empires changed throughout like, you know, centuries. And lastly, um, cost, say cost and effect, what caused this, what, what was the effect of this, you know? So going back here, it's a similarity. So it's a compare contrast between the trade and exchange networks of West Africa and another major Afro-Eurasian network in a period. So this is long, it's, the wording is once again technical. Basically, they want you to compare, you want, they want a similarity between like the West African trade network, which is, if you know, um, if you know the term, it's good. It's a trans, we call it the Saharan, trans-Saharan trade network because it's along the Sahara Desert. So 
Um, you can also call that, you know, West African Trade Network if you don't know the answer. That's a good thing about um, word, the wording of this question. So you want to compare it to Trans-Saharan Trade Network and another Afro-Eurasia network. Now you're going to like, what's Afro-Eurasia? Just think about it. What here, Here's Africa, here's Europe, and here's Asia. Where did they converge? Where did they meet? You're right. That's it's the Middle East. Uh, if you're not right, so it's the Middle East. So like, think of like any trade network that reached the Middle East. Let's see. Let's narrow it down. We got we already got the Sahara Desert network or trans saharan network. We already got the we already got the Indian Ocean trade network. No, no, no. That didn't touch Middle East even often. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, saharan trade is also for West Africa. So it's another name. And guess what's another one? The Silk Roads. Did the Silk Roads reach the Middle East? Yes. So you can compare West uh, Trans-Saharan Trade Network, Saharan Trade Network, and the Silk Road, for example. For instance, you can also argue actually the Indian Ocean Trade Network because, like, in, they approach the coast. So whatever you, you um, whatever you um, you want to use. So, but in both cases, um. These trade networks like um, involve the diffusion of religion. So, like, um, you can like you start with a broad statement. Since this is explain, they started so like both, both this this um, both Sahara tra Saharan trade network and Silk Roads or Indian Ocean trade network involve the diffusion of religions, the spread of religions. And then you can go over an example. So, um, from the from the Silk Roads, Islam went west. Uh, no, eastwards to um, India and China and Southeast Asia, even like that's barely part of Southeast Asia, and um, to the African kingdoms, it went down east. Um, actually, no, that's Sahara. Anyways, I don't want to throw my, you guys off. So Buddhism traveled from India to China. Islam went from Middle East to India to some part of China, but it failed. So that's the Silk Road. Um, you can talk about the Sahara Desert. The is um, Islam went from the Middle East down to the kingdoms like Mali. Um, there's a lot more like the Congo kingdoms. You can talk about the kingdom Aksum. Like this is where you need, this is the only reason why you need historical examples. This is why you only need to know the terms. So you can use them as evidence. You don't need to know all of them. You only need to know some good examples. So once again, yeah, Islam went from Middle East to Africa, you know, stuff like that. And um, you want to structure it like that. So. Um, Christianity went to like some to like Africa to some degree. There's this one kingdom called um, let's see if I remember. No, I don't. I think oh, it's it's called Ethiopia. So, so you can argue that like religions traveled across these networks. Next, it's same question, but we want a difference. So, don't over. Okay, here's a tip. Don't overthink things. I know you probably think of a Venn diagram. In um in your mind, don't over even the simplest things matter. If you have a good argument in it, just go for it. So what the, it's it's actually easier. What do they have not in common? So you can say like the Silk Roads use horses, and the Saharan trade networks use camels. Oh, no, no, like the assertion statement, like the first statement, like answers like oh they use different transportation technologies. So you can say the Silk Roads use horses, the African networks use camels. You can say that. You can go as simple as that. You can still you have a good shot at getting the point, or you can go. Um, you can go deeper, or actually, it's not even deeper. Oh yeah, Indian Ocean is even easier to contrast. So yeah, it's true. So you know, even in transportation, they use um or um like um boats. Yes, um boats. So they use so so uh, Indian Ocean use boats. Um, Sahara Desert use camels. So um, you can argue that, and um, you can also talk about the geographical location. So. Um, the Indian Ocean Trade Network and the Saharan Trans-Saharan Trade Network um, encompass different locations. So you can say that the Indian Ocean involves India, Southeast Asia, China. That's three for this team. And for the other team, Africa, Trans-Saharan Trade Network. It involved part of the Middle East, um, West, mostly West Africa. And you can talk about the kingdoms again. So also you can say like the Silk Roads, don't overthink. Once again, camel saddle those are it makes land versus seem more specific. So you can also use um, if you want to go back to the similarities, the Silk Road and the Trans Saharan, both were land networks. Or um so like land, so like Indian Ocean Trade Network or um 
or um, Transparent Trade Network. Both, um, no, one is in land, one is in water. Like, don't overthink it. You only have 13 minutes to do this and might as well get the point fabulously. So hope that answers you guys. Um, that hope, hope that helped you guys. So going back here, do you have questions? Um, this, I just like threw some like random terms here since most of you are in unit one. You don't have to memorize all of them, but if, if, I, if you have questions on them, um, you want to know like more about them, you know, just tell me, let me know. So, all right. What is junk? So, so Mr. Beckman mentioned dough. So junk is like, it's not like what we know today is junk. Junk is like, um, it's either, um, I don't know, I don't remember which kind of boat, but it's a, it's a kind of boat. So you can use that as evidence on like trade networks. So like, I think it's Southeast Asian. Oh, no, 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 it's Chinese, yeah. So Chinese ship, yes. Good job, yes, you and Mr. Beckman. So they know, yes, junk. <laughs> yes, you beat. All right, any other question? Any other specific? Yes, yes. Any other um, terms you wanna know, <laughs> Joe? I like how you even went from like, you know, those jokes to like, yeah, puns, I like it. Yeah. Anything else, guys? By the way, if you guys have tests like this week, good luck, you're gonna nail it. You can always ask us in like that resource I linked earlier in, yeah, on Tuesday. <laughs> That's a dad, dad, oh yeah, dad jokes. Ooh, good luck, Anthony. I think, are you in unit one? Because you're gonna, um, don't worry if you, um, you're gonna nail it. You're here, you're at the right place. So this study session is the right place for you. Why was, is this a joke? Um, and, okay, is this a joke? Okay. Um, if not, okay, so Timur Lane, Timur Lane was lame because, um, I think he got injured in battle. So he was an he was gonna he's gonna he's one of those like founders of like those Turkish empires later on. But I think it was in battle if I remember correctly. But um you can look it up on your own, but I think it was during battle. Or he was it was inborn. Yeah, the poor guy either way. Sad. I mean, hey, I mean to be fair, you participate in here, so Okay. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, okay. All right. Any other um, <laughs> questions, guys? I like this study session. You guys are cool. All right. I'll do a last call in like 30 seconds. So just throw me your questions. I know you have questions. All right, guys, so that's it. So, um, yeah, oh, two people got banned. So thank you guys for, um, for viewing with me, guys. Like, you guys are the best. Like, you guys are good particip participants. I can't even speak. So thank you guys for participating with my practice questions and my polls. Like, I like, um, I like you guys. Um, you guys are the best once again. So once again, if you have any questions or um, I'm going to bring it back. So you can all. Please chat with us here. No, 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 here. Go to Five with me. We have a, in our website on the side. There's a the bottom right corner. There's a bubble icon. Just chat with us. Like first, it's gonna say Amanda, but like someone will take over, and uh, it might be me, maybe Mr. Beckman. Like oh, dude, um, he's also he's a, he, oh yeah. Also give props to Mr. Beckman. He's he's he, he he's a he's a best history teacher. Like Five So okay, so. Um, just talk with us, you know, um, very epic. So just talk with us, you know, if it need help. So good job, guys. <laughs> no. Anyways, um, once again, need help. Read that real quick. Take a snapshot. And we're going to have more of this. Don't worry. Next, I think next week or two weeks. Okay, we're going down the meme route. Okay, we, we should just talk. You should talk to me. <laughs> okay, so... Um, um, if you need more help, um, once again, we have lots of weekly streams. We have lots of weekly streams. We can talk about labor. We can talk about religion. We, have, we talk about empire. We can talk about gender. So there's a lot of things to cover. We also have these study sessions either next week or in two weeks for the East Coast people, but you can always jump in. So, all right. Um, two percent later. All right. Um, enough of this. So thank you guys. Bye-bye. You guys are the best, I swear.